Um, welcome everyone. I'm Jennifer Billick. I'm a member of Leadership Medina County's Community Education Committee. Um, and I wanna thank you all for joining us for this session of the Untapped Potential of Inclusion. Today's program is made possible by the following, following. civic-minded organizations, Westfield, Medina County Community Fund, Automation Tool and Die, Westfield Bank, RPM International, Cleveland Clinic Medina Hospital, Sandridge Food Corp, University of Akron Medina, and Huntington National Bank. Thank you for leading the way and bringing conversation like these to life. Today's program is going to be broken up into three segments, and I will be monitoring the chat box, so please post your questions during the presentation. At the end of each segment, I'll share any questions that come in with our speakers. So let me introduce our speakers. Today are Ashley Powell, Tracy Ruffin, and Pastor Arthur Ruffin. Um, and Colleen has put their bios in the chat box already. So if you'd like to learn more about them, you can check that out. Colleen, would you launch our first poll? I'm actually happy to see that 94% of people know something about Juneteenth. Um, and we have four, we have some people who are experts in history majors. So um, feel free to reach out to me afterwards because I actually would probably put myself somewhere in between those two. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for spending your lunch hour with us. Um, I wanna tell you a little bit about Juneteenth and to be completely honest, I didn't know much about it till the past couple of years. In fact, there's so much about American history I had no clue about and admittedly didn't seek out. In my defense, much better at the English and science project type of things than math and history. <laughs> so Juneteenth is a celebration of complete American independence. And what do I mean by complete? Well, we you know traditionally on July 4th, back in 1776, the declaration announced the separation of the 13th, 13 North American colonies from Great Britain which is why every year the 4th of July, we get that grill out, we get some potato salad, and if you don't make your own, you can always uh, get grandma's potato salad. That's not a paid ad. I am an employee of Sandridge though. <laughs> and we end our day with fireworks and sparklers uh, celebrating America's independence. But the truth is, like Maya Angelou said, not no one of us can be free until everybody is free. And even on that day, not all of us were free. It took 89 years uh, for Juneteenth to happen um, in Galveston, Texas, was they were the last area to be notified that enslaved people were free. This was two years after President Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation and one year after the Senate passed the 13th Amendment abolishing slavery. Um, six months even still, it took for the House to pass it and officially uh, became law, part of our Constitution on January 31st in 1865. So I was thinking about all those history facts and I was like, you know what? I'm not even sure I know what's all within the Emancipation Proclamation and the 13th Amendment. Like, what does all that even mean? And why did it take so long for all this to happen? So I had to do some history lessons. Thank God for YouTube. Um, but there's this thing called the Civil War. Anybody hear about it before? So yeah, so I continued doing some research and I learned that America is and has always been complicated. Can we all agree? The Southern states wanted to assert their authority over the federal government so they could abolish the federal laws they didn't support. A lot of those laws had to do with um, the government's trying to interfere with the South's right to keep slaves and to take slavery into the Western territories that weren't mm -hmm. entirely claimed yet. And the North was committed to keeping them open to white labor alone. So Abraham Lincoln, was elected as president in 1860. And his victory was, it didn't have one single Southern electoral vote. And so to them, that was a clear signal to the Southern states that they had lost all influence on the political aspect. So they felt excluded from the system and they thought that their only option left was to, uh, to succeed and become their own. Um, so that decision led directly to war. So war broke out. Eventually, the North started gaining some momentum and went back and forth for a while, right? Uh, it got really bloody. And then once the North started gaining some, um, some momentum, President Lincoln decided to roll out the Emancipation Proclamation, which stated that all persons held as slaves within the rebellious states are and henceforward shall be free. Now, this was a bit of a political move because, you 
know, he was more anti-slavery, um, but he was really using this proclamation as a way to highlight the South's desire to have slaves, which in return stopped the British from backing the South because Great Britain at the time was more on the anti-slavery side as well. So this was news to me because it's the first time that I actually understood that slavery, that the whole uh, proclamation, it was more politically motivated for the North and economically motivated for the South because for them, they needed, you know, workers to help with the crops. Um, I think in my time frame, I thought it was just all about slavery. So I'm grateful for the opportunity that, to learn more. We know how the story ends, right? The Union, the North, they won. The 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which states neither slavery nor involuntary, involuntary servitude, except as punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Eventually, and that's a whole other story, it passed through Congress and was made official on January 31st of 1865. But I want you guys to reflect a little bit with me. You got to realize this whole time that the war was happening, this whole time that the Emancipation Proclamation was uh, established and the amendment was getting um, finalized, Black people were still enslaved. They had no rights. They were viewed as property. Oftentimes, they didn't have proper food to eat. I, I read in so many stories that animals ate better than the slaves. They were beaten. They were whipped. They worked hard, sun up, sun down, literally worked to death. So because there was no live stream press conferences on CNN, no social media articles to click on, uh, no TikTok, you know, videos to spread, no quick way to get letters out or cell phones um, to get this news all the way down to this little island town on the Gulf Coast of Texas. Uh, it took a while, right? So imagine the scene on June 19th in 1865 when Union Army General Gordon Granger and 2,000 federal troops arrived to formally tell the enslaved Black people that, with, mind you, now this is 250,000 people, 250,000 slaves just in this little island town in Galveston, Texas alone, that the Emancipation Proclamation had freed them. Can you imagine the excitement that must have broken out? So I want to read you guys the order. Um, that he read. And I can imagine, you know, this kind of scroll like thing. And he's saying, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. And the connection heretofore existing between them becomes that between employer and hired labor. The freedmen are advised to remain quietly at their present homes and, and work for wages. They are informed that they will not be allowed to collect that military post and, and idleness either there or elsewhere. So emancipation didn't happen overnight, even after that, after he came and read that decree. In some cases, enslavers withheld that information until after harvest season. Some even killed their slaves instead of being forced to free them because they couldn't take that. And as news spread though, celebrations broke out among newly freed black people and Juneteenth was born. Remember when I said America was complicated? Sometime in about 1866, freed men in Texas organized the first of what became the annual celebration of Jubilee Day or Emancipation Day or Freedom Day. Juneteenth is the most commonly adopted name and it features things like music and dancing, barbecues, prayer services, and a lot of other activities. And as Black people migrated out of Texas to all the other parts of the country, so did the tradition. And there's even a flag that represents this American holiday. Um, my mom, Tracy, uh, will be speaking on that. But let me make this clear, okay? If you guys leave today with anything, I want you to remember and realize and really internalize that this is not just a Black holiday. It's an American holiday. It's a second Independence Day. And I'm, to me, that's exciting. So that's what I learned in my studies. And as I continue to celebrate and embrace my culture, um, it was important to me to share with anybody who will listen. But I want, I, I want you to understand from my perspective of what it means to me. Um, it's a reflection of the fact that in my education, not all history has been um, given to me. And 
To me, Juneteenth represents, you know, that second Independence Day. It's a reminder of barbaric hatred, honestly, but also of humanity, of compassion and grace and strength. Reminds me of politics, reminds me of, of a lot of things, but mostly of resilience and survival. Uh, through faith and hard work, I know it's a time to reflect. And however you choose to reflect, for me, it's, you know, giving thanks to God because my future could be very different and to celebrate with my friends and family. And a reminder that America is complicated. So are we. And I know, guys, as a culture, we have a long way to go, but we have come so far and that's so worthy of celebration. And so I really hope that you guys um, take this little bit of snippet, research for yourself, and remember that this is not just a Black holiday, but it's an American holiday. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. That was really great. I loved your quote by Maya Angelou that really was meaningful to understand why this is so important to not just um, Blacks in America, but it's a, it should be truly celebrated as all Americans um, and their, their liberties there. Um, we did have one question that, that came in for you. Do you think this was a complete surprise to the enslaved people in Texas or would rumors have spread to them in some way? I, I believe wholeheartedly this was a complete surprise. If you look on the map where Galveston is, it's, I mean, it's literally kind of cut off. It's in a remote area of Texas and Texas is already so far removed, you know, from at the time where the colonies were. Um, even if there were rumors, there's no way that they would have felt comfortable enough to believe it. It was more like a hope or a dream. Um, so I believe that it was a complete surprise. I, if I could put myself in those shoes, I'd imagine that, um, you know, they didn't know what to do, <laughs> that they were stunned and had a hard time believing that before, you know, the federal um, army showed up. So I believe it just came as a surprise and was so liberating and so exciting for, for the slaves then. Thanks. Um, so Colleen, I think we are giving away some prizes today. Ah, Reverend Michael. Okay, you are our first winner today of a book. And we're going to give away two books um, every break here. So I'm going to go ahead and close that and we're going to spin it one more time. Uh, Reverend Michael, if you could message me your address, we're going to mail that book to you and I'll tell you what that book is in just a second. The book that we're giving away is Blind Stop Spot, Hidden Biases of Good People, and we'll be using it for a book discussion next month with Dr. Shoebridge and Annette F. You are a winner also, so please also message me your address so we can send you a book. Congratulations. And Colleen, I think with that, we're going to have you launch our next poll. And Ashley, while everybody's participating in the poll, we had one more question come in. Uh, what is the best way to wish someone a good Juneteenth? Is it happy Juneteenth? What's the greeting? I would say happy Juneteenth. Yeah, I like to say happy 4th of July. Um, I think it's, it's yeah, happy Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any other comments, Mom? After up in No, I would agree with you on that. Um, happy Juneteenth would be um, the best way to to celebrate that for all the reasons Ashley said, we say happy birthday, we say happy 4th of July. Um, so happy Juneteenth would be great. Okay, so we have the results of uh, the second polling question. The question was a revised red, white, and blue flag honoring Juneteenth was introduced in 2000. What symbol is at the center of the flag? So it looks like 59% of you got it right. <laughs> um, at the center of that flag is the star. Um, and that revised red, white, and blue flag is the Juneteenth flag that we're gonna be discussing today. Um, so before I start talking about and getting a little history about the flag that Colleen is, is sharing with you all right now, just wanted to take a minute to thank um, leadership Medina County for hosting these untapped potential of inclusion series. It's it's such a great and needed thing. And so I appreciate you all and the hard work that you've done um, to educate us all on that. And um, to say good, good afternoon to you all and thank you for spending your lunch hour with us. And hello to um, 
our mayor, Mayor Hanwell. Thank you for joining us this morning or this afternoon. So let's talk about this flag. Um, if you attended our inaugural Juneteenth event last year um, on the square, then you would have seen these flags. Um, and I also talked about the meaning of them as well there. But let's just take a look at this flag for a minute and pull out some of the meanings um, of the colors, um, the importance of flags, and the meaning of this particular flag. But, you know, oftentimes we take for granted the significance and the meaning behind some of our most well-known symbols. I mean, we just see them, they become ritual or traditional, and we um, attribute them to something, but we lose sight of, of what they really mean. Flags have long been used for a representation of places and people. And the thought that goes into their design goes far beyond just the choosing of complementary colors and images. They're not just made to be pretty because these colors go together. They actually mean something. And their meanings often exemplify the values and the history and the moral standing of the places or individuals that they represent. For example, you know, even sports teams <laughs> have flags, right? Cleveland Cavaliers have flags. Um, and um, flags were used in battle. Um, they often symbolized wins and defeats. You know, when we um, wave the white flag, that actually means something. And everyone knew what it meant if they were in war. Um, it, it actually meant that they surrendered. Um, so the flag actually meant something, not, not not only the fact that it's on a pole, but that the color of it actually meant something. When I think about that, and I think about how every person in every place had a flag, imagine that back in enslaved days, the people did not actually, um, the slaves didn't actually have a flag. They weren't even considered people or citizens. Um, as Ashley stated in her history, thank you, by the way, Ashley, um, that's my baby girl. <laughs> but um, um, and as she stated in her history, they weren't even citizens. They were considered property. But everyone else in the world had a flag that represented who they were. Um, so regardless of the venue or reason, a flag's design is created under careful consideration, and the colors used in its foundation represent far greater ideas than what is found on a simple color wheel. So everything is intentional and done with purpose, right? Um, so let's take a look at this flag and, and pull out some of its meanings. The official Juneteenth flag was created in 1977 by activist Ben Haith the founder of the National Juneteenth Celebration Foundation, with the help of an illustrator, Lisa Jenna Graff. The deliberate process of designing the flag, which is packed with symbols of the day's meaning, has made it an essential element of the holiday. So let's take a look. Um, it deliberately is red, white, and blue. Now, as far as my history goes of Juneteenth, which is very minimal as of 2020, when activists made it, um, brought it to the forefront when it came in, in the face of racial injustice and the murder of George Floyd and all of these things that all, all became right in our face is when Juneteenth for me became, is the first time I actually heard the word. But when I first started seeing things about Juneteenth, I often would see the colors um, red, black, and green. You know, they were always the background colors when you read Juneteenth, red, black, and green. So when I began to do the history about this flag, I was often mesmerized at the fact that it was red, white, and blue. And so I had to literally for myself, educate myself, why is this flag red, black, and green that I see when everybody's advertising Juneteenth, but then the actual official Juneteenth flag is red, white, and blue. So it's, it's deliberate because the color scheme, they want to make it just like the American flag. The Juneteenth flag has a white star, which, which was the question, um, in the center meant to represent both Texas, which is the Lone Star State, as well as the freedom of enslaved people in all 50 states. Well, what does that mean? Because on our US flag, we have this, the stars that represents the states, right? So not only is that star in the center of this flag representative of Texas, it's also representative of all states, <laughs> um, represents all the freedom of enslaved people in all 50 states. So in that same vein, the white bursting outline that you see around that 
that star is said to have been inspired by a nova. Now, a nova is an astronomical uh, term, and it's an event that marks the birth of a new star. And so uh, Mr. Hay thought, you know, we'll put this nova symbol around the star. Um, in this instance, it would symbolize a new beginning for African Americans in the United States. So now when you begin to look at the flag, you'll, this Juneteenth flag, you'll be able to point and see the symbolisms that it actually carries. So now we know why it's red, white, and blue. Um, we know what the star in the center represents, and we know what the burst or what's um, symbolized as a nova around that star represents, the new beginning. Now, in between the space where the blue and the red is, there's an arc that I don't know if it's so visible on this flag, but it's actually in an arc symbol um, design, and it extends across the whole width of the flag. At the intersection of the red and blue sec sections is yet another symbol um, of a new beginning, or rather, in this instance, it represents a new horizon. I don't know, I get really excited when I think about exactly what the meanings of <laughs> these symbols mean, and it, it puts a whole new thing um, on it for me. You know, it's, it's like when you begin to realize the lyrics to a song and actually live them out. It's the same way with this flag. Um, so the red, white, and blue color scheme that mimics that of the American flag was not a conscious, was, I'm sorry, it was a conscious choice. And it was meant to signify that enslaved people who were not granted citizenships and their descendants were and always have been Americans, as well as signifying the U.S. United States continuous commitment to do better, to doing better, and to live up to the American idea of liberty and justice for all, not justice for some, but justice for all. So that's what this flag represents and those symbolisms. Um, in the year 2000, they added the date um, to the side to be symbolic and always to be memor memorialized as the date that Galveston, Texas was um, when everyone became free. But as Ashley stated, um, uh, Maya Angelou's uh, famous quote, you know, no one's free until we're all free. I guess that really depends on where, you're, where you sit and what you're thinking about. But I've given you the symbolisms and the meanings um, behind this flag. Um, but before I uh, pass it on to my husband, I did wanna share just a couple of things with you all. Um, as what Juneteenth means to me personally. Um, as I stated, it wasn't until the holiday gained tremendous cultural popularity, you know, um, with all the racial injustices that were go was going on that I actually began to educate myself. I, I didn't learn it. It wasn't something that I learned um, in school. Um, and so for me, it was hard for me to wrap my brain around actually celebrating being enslaved. Like I, I was having like this mental juggle in my mind, like how are we even gonna celebrate this? Um, so yeah, so we, we um, have taken it upon ourselves to educate ourselves um, on those things. Um, but I did want to leave you with this quote also by Maya Angelou um, that stuck out to me. And I'm just gonna read it uh, really quick. And it says, Won't, this is what she had to say. Won't it be wonderful? when black history and Native American history and Jewish history and all of US history is taught in one book, just US history. When I think about that, how powerful of a statement um, is that? Just US history, not African American history, not Jewish history, because guess what? We're all Americans. And so thank you again um, for just for listening. And if you have any questions about the symbolisms of that flag, I would encourage you to do more research um, on it. Thank you very much. Hey, Tracy. Thank yeah. you. That was, I, I was, I'm now I want to know more about the other flag too. So you and I'll have to talk later to understand where the why the two are around and, and learn more about that. Absolutely. But besides that. Um, we got a question for you. Mm -hmm. Why isn't this flag shown more than the other flag? So um, just to repeat and make sure I understand, why isn't the official Juneteenth flag 
yes. shown more than the other red, black, the and other green flag. flag. Yeah. yeah. So that that is a great question. Um, and okay. <laughs> so to be honest, I had a whole battle on the inside of me because I really wanted to purchase the red, black, and green flags to honor uh, Juneteenth. But to be honest, it wasn't until I did, did the history that I understood that this official Juneteenth flag is what really represents all people. Because if we, flow, if we only flew the red, black, and green flag, which is symbolic of black freedom, then, then we're again causing disunity instead of unity. And so the whole idea is to, to make people uh, aware and bring awareness to the fact that this is a national holiday. When we begin to separate out things, then, you know, again, we're putting up barriers. So I, that's a really great question. And in my opinion, I think it's because lack of knowledge. It's just a basically lack of knowledge of the official Juneteenth flag. I hope that answered the question. It did, at least it did for me, so thank you. Um, I, we had one other question that came in beforehand that I wanted to ask. Should companies celebrate or advertise Juneteenth? We've seen a lot of marketing out there and it's some of it's more probably the, the red, green and black flag. Um, what are your thoughts on the marketing of Juneteenth? Go ahead, Ash. So I think it's important that companies celebrate and advertise, advertise Juneteenth. Um, now it is a federally recognized holiday. Um, it's the second Independence Day. That's something I think companies should embrace. And I, one of the more interesting things, so my, my career role is in human resources and my new role within that um, company or within my company is retention. And so a lot of my time I spent, like how do we get people to stay and wanna be here? And I think people wanna see their selves reflected in the work environment. Um, I think they want to see, um, feel valued and respected and included. And do you know that this generation that's coming up here, Gen Zs, who are entering the workforce, have been in the re uh, workforce, are considered racially and ethnic um, ethnically more diverse than any other generation? Um, so if we consider that for talent acquisition purposes, for recruiting purposes, purposes and retention purposes, it's important that companies celebrate and advertise more diverse um, in, uh, holidays, I think. And so in order to do that, there's a lot of official things. I think putting out education maybe even ahead of time would be good so that people understand why we're celebrating it, uh, getting the facts straight and not going off of um, you know, social media or uh, taking just opinions of a certain population of people. So put out the education, get the correct you know, official uh, marketing type of materials and then celebrate because it's worthy of celebration. Thanks, Ashley. So, Colleen, I think we're ready for our next winners. All right, let's see who we've got this time. All right, I think that's Rachel Potesta. Rachel, make sure you send me your address in a private chat and I will get the book to you and let's go ahead and do one more. All right, that's uh, Jennifer Brenner. Cut dog. I love winning <laughs> stuff. <laughs> your address Jennifer and we will uh, mail you the book again that's the book that we are doing um, with a discussion next month with Dr. Shoebridge uh, called Blind Spot the Hidden Biases of People so um, we're looking forward to that discussion and I hope that a lot of you can come out and join us for that so it's time for the next poll right yes all right let's go ahead and launch that even though Pastor Ruffin was first today his poll is last Pastor Ruffin, I'll let you take it away with your portion and uh, talking about these results for the audience participation time. All right, thank you so much. Um, this post says, which state was the first to recognize Juneteenth as a state holiday? Um, it's good to see we got 68%. Um, 
The other ones were probably eating or crunching and didn't hear Ashley's answer and uh, Tracy, but yes, Texas is it. Um, that is right, those that um, selected Texas is correct. Um, thank all of you uh, for sharing with us during your lunch hour. Uh, thank you, Mayor Hamwell, for joining us. Um, and it's good that you've allowed us to come during your lunchtime and just share um, the history that we have of Juneteenth. Um, I think the first question we asked ourselves is, um, what is freedom? What, what does freedom look like to you? Um, is it black? Is it white? Is it green? Is it red? Is it yellow? Um, what is the true definition of freedom? Um, Ashley and Tracy talked about most of, I think, what we all had uh, in common. Um, but history tells us there's, I believe, two things most of us on here today uh, can recognize, and that is the Emancipation Proclamation. Most of us was taught that in school. Uh, and then we were taught about uh, June 19th, 1865, uh, where Texas was set free. Uh, but the rest, we have no history of. Uh, we know nothing of Juneteenth. We don't know where it come from. Um, a lot of people, I think, believe it's just a made up holiday. Um, how did we get to that point? Um, I think when we study and we go back, most of us do understand and believe that somewhere in the past, uh, there was something that was called slavery. Um, slavery included African Americans, uh, brown people. Those were the people uh, who was in charge of taking care of farms, uh, rowing the ships, uh, taking care of land, uh, having babies by uh, their slave masters and all of that, they were abused. And so when we go back and we look at history, history tells us that this did exist. Um, whether we want to accept it or not, it, it did exist. And I think in today's culture, the hardest thing for us to do is to accept what was before us. Um, there are people that says, why have Juneteenth? What, what's the importance? Um, you have July the 4th, that's an independence day. Well, if, if you study history, history will tell you that as a slave, you were not considered a, a citizen. Uh, you had no rights, you had no freedom, you were under your master. So slaves were not considered citizens until they were actually set free. Um, as Ashley and Tracy both said, even in um, 1865, when they were set free, a lot of them still weren't set free. Someone was killed, uh, someone was beaten, someone was still caught in slavery. And so here we are in today, uh, 2023, talking about something that we probably didn't read in our history books, um, but we have an inkling or an ideal um, that something is true. Um, it's not a made up holiday. I did some more research myself, uh, and if I can read off my paper, uh, in January 1st, 1980, a man by the name of Al Edwards that was in the House of Senate put forth the bill called HB 1016 to end slavery. And the strange part was when it went to the Senate for a vote, it was 415 people for this and 14 against. Let me, let me say that again. It was 415 for the ending of slavery, and there was 14 people that, that was against it. Now, now, isn't that something that even back then when they voted, there were people that was against this, um, that didn't like it? Um, do we have it today? It probably do. Um, there's probably people that will probably never understand um, what slavery was, what Juneteenth is. Um, if you even go back to Martin Luther King, uh, he marched for something. He, he marched for the rights of not only Black people, but he marched for the rights of human people, that all people can be free. If you read history, you go back, um, there was a time when Blacks and whites were segregated. We couldn't go to the same schools. We couldn't go to the same bathroom. We couldn't drink from the same water fountain. Um, history has repeated itself constantly and constantly. And you have always found that there was somebody that was fighting for freedom. 
That's, that's what we call it, freedom. So if you ask the question, why celebrate Juneteenth? Um, because it shows freedom for African-Americans uh, because we were set free even two years before 1865. It just didn't get to Texas. You even see that after 1865, when we were set free, uh, you had the bombing in Texas. Why? Because a group of black people had become prosperous and it was almost like they had their own neighborhood and white people were offended by that and didn't want them to get ahead. And so they blew up everything that they had built. Uh, so even in today's time, is there still racism? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Don't never let nobody tell you it isn't. Um, I, I, as Ashley said, uh, what we look at in this generation, this generation has no problem with black and whites. I want to be able to teach my children, it's okay to date a white girl. It's okay to date a black guy. It's okay to marry this one. It's okay to marry that one. I want to teach my grandchildren that we live in a world where everybody is the same. What makes us the same? Because we are all Americans, not the, not the color of our skins. So there is conversations that need to be had that are very difficult. I'll be the first one to tell you, I've had some difficult conversations with some Caucasian friends, but I thank God that that opportunity opened the door for itself. I have sat down with, with Mayor Hanwell and we've had some conversations and I thank God that I believe it's, it's our Christian faith that draws us together, um, that we can walk hand in hand. I've talked to Sheriff uh, uh, Grice, I talked to Chief Kenny, uh, I've talked to Pam Miller. I've talk, we've sat down and we've had these tough uh, conversations where we, we literally cried and said, you know, it's, it's sad that we had to or still live in times like these. When we say that we're all supposed to be one, when, when we celebrate June 4th or the 4th of July, I'm sorry, when we celebrate the 4th of July, do I feel like that's freedom for me? When we say the Pledge of Allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, individual. Do I feel that that's part of me because I was considered a slave? That wasn't written for me. So we have a day that's set aside that says, listen, all black people are set free. All people, I get excited. We have, we have two Independence Day, Yahoo, I'm glad. All we're doing is showing that, yes, my friends are free. If they're free, guess what? I'm gonna be free right along with you. You may not understand it. It may not look good. Change is hard for everybody. It's change. Change is hard for anybody. We always wanna do the same thing. And we always say, don't fix it if it ain't broke. But a lot of times it's broke and we are afraid to fix it. We're scared of what our friends gonna say. We're scared of what our neighbors gonna say. We're scared of what people gonna think if, if I walk or if I sit or if I eat or if I go. We, we have come a long way. Now as African-Americans, we can go to the same schools. We can go to the same bathroom. We can drink from the same water fountains. We can go to the same restaurants. And that was a dream that Martin Luther King had. If you remember part of his speech where he says, I may not get there, but one day, little black boys and little white girls will be able to sit down together and be as one. And, and today, that's, that's my prayer. Everything that you see us working on, on behalf of Second Baptist, on behalf of Sister Circle, on behalf of Just Now What, it talks about inclusion. One day, we may not see it, but it'll be written in history that Medina has changed from what people thought it would be. I don't care what people think about me, as long as I'm doing what God is pleased with, I thank, I thank God for my Caucasian friends that say, hey, listen, let's get together and have lunch. That they're not ashamed to sit in a restaurant with me, even though I don't look like nobody else. You will never know what that looks like until you're black. You will never know that because we didn't have that freedom where we can come and go as we want. And so now, is it easier? Yes, it's a lot easier. But is it complete? Probably not. So still, we, we have a long way to go, but I thank God for the progress that we have established, um, especially here uh, in the city of Medina, where you figured 3% is black in Medina, but yet you still see us getting along. 
you still see us having these conversations. You still see us on the square doing things. You still see us down at the foundry laughing and greeting. You still see the mayor walking around grinning and smiling and thanking everybody. You still see leadership Medina having this, that. There's no discrimination. That's a start. When we look back from 1865, to 2023, we have come a long way that we can sit at our white friend's house and have dinner and look and laugh and watch neighbors across the street see us come out and they're peeking through their curtains because they're like, how in the world can you do that? That's because we're free and we're not afraid to do that. So listen, thank you for your time. Thank you for allowing us to come to you and share with you during this lunch hour and I'm gonna give it back to you in case there's other questions. And thank Tracy, my wife, for doing the flags and Ashley for giving that history as if she was a history teacher in school. <laughs> so Pastor Ruffin, we did have a question come in for you. Okay. What can we all do to help raise awareness for the holiday? And um, even to add to it on a personal level, but also as a business community, how can we also help support Juneteenth? In Medina County? I, I think one of the things you have to do is, is grasp the information for yourself. Um, if you don't have it, ask somebody that knows, you know, tell me a little bit more about Juneteenth. Um, what does it stand for? What does it mean? Why should I be involved? Um, because if we're going to be one, if we're going to be inclusive, we, we all have to grab this thing. As Tracy said, Juneteenth is not a black holiday. Yes, it's a day when black slaves were set free, but everybody in America ought to want to celebrate that because people's lives were set free. Um, on, on Martin Luther King Day, I'll never forget this. Um, our speaker, Pastor Paramore said, uh, Martin Luther King isn't a black holiday. A lot of people thought it was a black holiday. He said, we don't call President's Day a white holiday. We just call it American holiday. So we have to get in our mind that holidays are not black, white, green, red. They are American holidays that we come around the table and we celebrate together. If, if you don't know what it is, ask somebody. Be excited for me as a black man or be excited for Tracy as a black woman or Ashley as a black woman that, you know, you guys are celebrating history. You're no longer walking around with handcuffs and chains. Can you imagine seeing us on the square with handcuffs and chains, walking around, can't go here, go. we're set free. And people ought to be excited about that. So yes, right. I, think, I think businesses ought to, are to partner with us and say, yes, we're, we're excited for this, this holiday. Um, can I just piggyback off something um, he said, Jen, really quick? Absolutely. Um, so I think, you know, since, since it was signed into legislation as a, as a national holiday, yeah last year and so many people now <laughs> so many people now get the day off right we can look at instead of looking at it as a day off we should look at it as a day on um almost like martin luther king's day you know we look at it as a day of service people reach out and do uh acts of kindness and all of those things on those days so if we look at juneteenth in the same manner instead of it yes we're celebrating black culture and all of those things things, but we also can serve, um, make it, uh, we're all welcome at the DEI table, right? So we can make it like um, an educational day to make yourself more aware, um, deepen your awareness of Juneteenth and, and advance your knowledge. Um, go visit museums and during Black History Month, people do that, you know, go, go make yourself more aware of the holiday um, that you're getting a day off for, right? And then let's call it a day on. Um, Ashley, you want to I think you had something to say about the business. Um, well, yes. So here in Medina, and you guys know more about this than I do, because we put on this amazing celebration last year for Juneteenth. But specifically, I would challenge the business and ask the businesses to consider being a sponsor for this year. So you guys can give the date and any more details that you have at this time. Um, support, show up. Uh, simple acknowledgement, I think, goes a long way because uh, we... I think at times we just pretend like it's not there. To make us uncomfortable, we don't speak about it. But honestly, guys, we're not going to get anywhere in society if we don't talk about those things. And I'm always a component of saying, it's not what you say, it's how you say it and your intentions behind that. But for business in particular, in this community, 
um, a challenge I would do is consider, a uh, challenge I would give to you is to consider how you can be a part of our, uh, our, our town celebration. And Ashley, I think you might have just hinted at this other question. I think there's supposed to be a special announcement. Are we going to be celebrating Juneteenth on the square again this year? Um, let me answer that for you. Um, yes, we will be. Um, we just met on yesterday, uh, part of our committee, and there are others that are taking part of this. It's not just Second Baptist and Sister Circle. Um, the city of Medina is in collaboration, Sister Circle Medina, Second Baptist Church, Cleveland Clinic Medina, Medina Diversity Project, Main Street Medina, uh, a committee that was just formed called CAPS would be part of us. And then there's others. Uh, and, and one thing I love about our, our mayor, uh, he's always inclusive. He's always looking at collaborating things, bringing everybody to the table so that people can see that it's just not this group or it's not just this group, it's not just this group. It's everybody in Medina that is coming together and we are collaborating together to do this. Uh, even on last year, we had so many businesses in this city uh, that were sponsors that took on leadership role. Um, it was just hard because it was on Father's Day last year um, this year, it is going to be on, and I'm hoping I got this right, June 17th. Am I right? Yeah, Saturday. June 17th, which is a Saturday, and it's going to be from 10 to 4. There's going to be food. There's going to be fun. There's going to be games. Uh, there's going to be a band. There's going to be singing. There's going to be dancing. There's a, we're going to celebrate like they did back then, how they say, how do we bring it up to today? We're going to do everything they did back then, plus some today, and call it a celebration. That's that's what it is. We want to just come, and the whole city of Medina can celebrate with us. That's awesome. I'm so excited for that. We did have one question of clarification, Pastor Ruffin. Yes. What year was that house bill that you mentioned? Um, hold on. Let me grab my paper here. <laughs> January 1st, 1980. And, a, and one of the senators by the name of Al Edwards was the one that put forth the bill, H as in Harry, B as in Bob, 1016. Steve says, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so um, there was one last question. I think we have time to answer, Colleen, before we do our last winners. Um, the last question that I saw come in, let me find it again. Do you think the news um, just didn't reach Texas because of the natural delays of the time period of getting news out? Or do you think it was more nefarious? Were, were they really trying to keep them from knowing the truth? I don't think it was uh, intentional. I think it was just because of the country and, and the methods and means of being able to um, give out that information. So it just took two years for the horses and the whole army to make it that far from the north all the way down to that little town at the bottom west-ish area of Texas. So yeah, <laughs> if I may say one thing, I've been thinking about this as we've all been talking. Um, I want to put a different spin on embracing learning about difficult times in our country. So for me, when I think about the history of slavery and, and African Americans and, and becoming free in Juneteenth, I feel like learning about all the awful things that did happen heightens the celebration of like how far we've come today. And so, you know, we have to know, we have to learn from it, we have to grow and we celebrate where we're at today. So I want to throw that in there. Thank you, Ashley. I agree. I, I don't think we can truly celebrate until we understand how far we've come. So, all right, Colleen, you're up. All right, let's draw our last two books. Looks like Doug oh. Bumpy. <laughs> and we'll draw one last book.
All right, Josh. I'm not sure who you are, Josh, but you're going to have to message me or get a hold of me at the office because you didn't have a last name on your profile. Um, and I still have not heard from Reverend Michael Wilson, but I'll try to reach you via email also. Um, you do not need to be a part of the book discussion next month, but we all hope that you will do that. Uh, again, the book that they're going to be receiving is Blind, Stop, Blind Spot, Hidden Biases of Good People. Jen? Thank you again, Ashley, Tracy, and Pastor Ruffin for sharing about Juneteenth and what it means to you. Um, I know I learned a lot today, and I just can't wait to continue to dig in and learn more. Um, thank you all for joining us today. We hope your answer, your questions were answered and you learned something as well. Um, if there were any questions that didn't get answered, we will send them out following the presentation. Following the program, our team will also be uploading today's session to Leadership Medina County's YouTube ch channel. So feel free to share this with your circle of friends to help educate others on when they ask, why do we celebrate Juneteenth? We hope you'll join us for our next session on March 9th um, at 7 p.m. at Medina Library. Um, it's the book discussion that we've been receiving these awesome books for. Um, the book discussion is going to be led by Dr. Rick Shoebridge. He is the class from the class of 2019 and is the president of Medina Hospital. And again, that book is Blind Spot, Hidden Biases of Good People by Grinwald and Banaji. Let us know if you're coming by registering on our website at leadershipmedinacounty.org. And thanks again, everybody. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.